CES 2024 is in full swing, and right now we're speaking with NVIDIA VP of Automobiles, Danny Shapiro. Danny, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I guess, you know, obviously the, the big theme at CES 2024 is AI. So how does that fit into NVIDIA's automotive strategy? That's a great question. We're, we're super excited to be here in the Mercedes-Benz booth. And what we're showing behind me actually is the new CLA concept, uh, which is going to be the first vehicle from Mercedes-Benz with NVIDIA Drive and Science. So that's our AI platform for automated driving, driver assistance, all kinds of convenience features. So we're basically bringing the type of AI from the cloud that we're used to seeing, but bringing it right into the car processing the sensor data and making the vehicle much safer to be in. Yeah, I think that's, that's one of the interesting things to point out, right, is, you know, we all talk about generative AI in general, but self-driving cars or self-driving technology uh, only exists because of AI. No, that's absolutely right. There's a massive amount of data that's being generated from all the cameras on the car, the radar, now LiDAR on this vehicle, and that has to be processed in real time. So that's where NVIDIA comes in, providing the horsepower to take all that data, make sense of it, and understand exactly where the lanes are, where the potential hazards are, be able to read signs, detect the lights. And so we're bringing that out now to make these vehicles safer, to be an assistance feature for them, but they're software updatable vehicles. So over time, we're developing the software with Mercedes and all of our auto customers to be able to then add greater and greater levels of autonomy and eventually we'll get to self-driving. I guess, you know, when it comes to self-driving, is there is there a thought on when that might come? I know it's always the, the you know, I guess billion dollar question that everybody's kind of banding about. And, uh, the, the early prognosticators had said, oh, it'll be here in no time, but obviously it's it's a little bit longer than, than that, probably. Absolutely, you know, so this is a challenge we've been working on for well over a decade. That's something I think the, the entire industry underestimated the complexity, and the reality is safety has to be the top priority. It is for us, it is for so many of our partners, and we need to make sure we get it right. So while these estimates were put out there initially, we realized we underestimated the complexity. And so we're focused on making sure that before we put anything out on the road, that is tested and validated for every possible scenario. So this is where another aspect of NVIDIA comes in. We can use simulation technology for the creation of the AI, but also for testing and validating that AI and make sure that in all types of lighting conditions, all kinds of weather conditions, many different scenarios, the kinds of things that don't happen very often, it's hard to train for. So we can use AI and create synthetic data to understand what possibly could happen and make sure the car will react appropriately. Is, is that something similar to, to the Omniverse, the, the digital twin kind of idea that NVIDIA has, has been working on, where yeah, you can build these, these digital absolutely. versions of, of objects, factories, things like that? You're, you're absolutely right. So we really are able to apply this across the entire workflow within the auto industry, from the designers that can use Omniverse and create essentially digital versions of the vehicle, right? That's part of the design process. Then using Omniverse, that exact same model becomes part of what goes into the engineering team. Then can go into the manufacturing side where we can create a virtual factory, a digital twin of the factory. It's modeling every aspect of the factory, the robots, uh, the conveyors, the other employees working inside the factory. We can model all that, optimize it, and make sure it all works before the factory's even built. And then we can even extend that model beyond into the retail side, using all that same data to create a virtual retail or showroom experience. People can customize their car, choose different materials, the interior trims, different wheels, and even take it on a virtual test drive. So all of that simulation then is a very valuable tool throughout that whole workflow. So in addition to testing and validating the AVs, it really applies to all the mechanical, physical, and even sort of retail and service uh, extensions of that whole workflow. Well, I want to ask you about generative AI. Obviously, it was the, the huge theme of, of 2023, still going to be a big theme uh, into 2024. And I want to get your thoughts on how that kind of fits into the, the automotive side of things for NVIDIA as well. 
that, I mean, so generative AI, um, we've, we've just started. And it's, I think the important thing to recognize, it's, it's not just about text in and text out. That's you know, what ChatGPT kind of started. It has amazing capabilities. There's a lot of room for improvement. Of course, something that's trained on just a vast array of data, some of it real, some of it not, uh, means the results are, aren't going to always be accurate. So what we're doing is putting together tools in place to be able to curate data and be able to make sure that if you're going to talk to your Mercedes, you want it to make sure it has accurate information. So Mercedes can train this large language model with the history of Mercedes vehicles, with all the information about the CLA concept, the manual, the service manual, whatever it is, so that when you have a dialogue with that vehicle, it comes back with the right answer. But beyond that, we're using generative AI for other data streams. We can put text in and imagery out, text in and video out. Uh, could be video in and text out. So there's so many different ways that generative AI can be used. Imagine we have an automated vehicle, the front facing camera is taking in 30 frames a second of video. We can then use a large language model to convert the pixels in that video into an explanation of what's happening in the scene. So, Basically, the car can explain to you why it's making certain driving decisions or tell you what's going on in the scene to improve your trust and confidence in the system or provide alerts that mean something other than just the beep. So there's so many different ways that generative AI is really helping the auto industry from a designer that may do a sketch and the generative AI will create a 3D model and then different permutations on that. It becomes a co-pilot for them, an assistant that is able to make their job and their productivity much better. So it's not going to take their job away, but it's going to make them more productive and create higher quality results. And in the case of all the safety systems, all these tools are going to increase the safety inside the vehicle. Hey, you know, on the, the, the automotive side and, and almost kind of the, the automotive consumer side, I know NVIDIA also introduced uh, an automotive configurator. Um, it's kind of the, the idea of being able to build your car on a, on a company's website, but in a more advanced way. So can you kind of just explain that to, to us? Sure, so we're, we're leveraging the exact same data that's used to build the car and putting those models into more of a marketing role as opposed to engineering role. We can photorealistically render it. People can choose all different aspects of their car, kind of create their dream car. Uh, maybe on their PC they're doing it, maybe even in a VR headset experience, look all around, see what that vehicle is going to be like to drive, and maybe even using our simulation technology, take it on a virtual test drive in a digital twin you know, of the city that they live in, or see what it looks like parked in their driveway. So generative AI is going to help create all these different kinds of scenes and be able to help the automakers uh, increase you know, the types of options that are added to the vehicle because people can kind of see it and maybe even experience it. We could simulate different features and functions in the car actually working and people could add that to their car as they're ordering their vehicle. And you know, one of the things that, that NVIDIA is highlighting is just the, the breadth of different uh, automo uh, automakers that, that you, know, you work with. I guess, how do you see those, those relationships continuing to grow over time? Well, you know, we're working with hundreds of automakers, truck makers, robo-taxi companies, shuttle companies, and then so the whole ecosystem, the tier one suppliers, the sensor companies, the mapping companies, a lot of software developers, they're all building on the NVIDIA Drive platform. So we've created this open system such that it's not a fixed function, but rather a supercomputer that delivers the horsepower, the computing horsepower, to run the software that's required today, but also with headroom so that it can continue to evolve and develop in the future. So a year from now, we might be sitting here at CES talking about all kinds of new AI technology that no one's thought of yet, but we'll be able to update the software in the car to add those new features and capabilities. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't do that for my 07 Mustang. That's not really very well connected. But Danny Shapiro, VP of Automotive at NVIDIA, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Dan. It's great to be with you.